Good evening. This is Ann Sellers with Cindy Dennis Ministries. And welcome, welcome, welcome. I know we've had some problems with Facebook today, so we are excited that God has prevailed, that we are able to do this broadcast that we've just been praying about. And so I uh, want to get right into it. We're not going to take a, a lot of time for introductions. I do want to say that this month our focus is on uh, adoption and foster care of the system. And uh, we just want to note that there are about 424,000 children in the foster care system. And so you might wonder what and why should we even be interested in that? Well, the Bible tells us in James 1, 27 that religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. We have a responsibility to care for our children. Uh, our main thing this month is uh, hear the voice of the child. And so we're with the lady tonight, Karen Fletcher, and some of you who are uh, viewing probably recognizes her. Um, she is working in this area of a foster, she's a foster mom, and she has been working very closely in the system of adoption and foster care. So I am going to let her tell her story, and I will eventually interject with some questions. But Karen? Well, welcome, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead, tell your story. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. I'd like to share with the audience that foster care and being in foster care is a very traumatic experience for children. Many people don't realize that uh, a child normally goes into foster care, the average age is about six and a half, and to have a young person, a young child, go into foster care at that age is frightening. Foster families have a tremendous opportunity where they can take mm -hmm. a child into their home love them and give them the nourishing and support that they really need. Now just to tell you about foster care, what does foster care really mean? Foster care is a system that is designed to uh, get children who are in perhaps abusive situations, who may have lost parents, or for some other reason are not in a safe environment. Children have to be protected at all costs. And sometimes the parents are just not able to care for the child. And therefore, the system comes in and they remove that child and they try to place that child in a home where that child will be loved and supported. Now, because that child is confused and have been removed from their home, oftentimes they're frightened and they act out. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, well, this must be a bad child because they're in the foster care system. No. How would you feel if you're removed from your family? Absolutely. You're in a strange place. Mm -hmm. You don't know if these people are going to love you or hurt you. So foster care has taken on a lot of dynamics. Now, when a child does reach a home that's loving and supportive, sometimes the parents are able to come back and get the child. Mm -hmm. And that's great. Even after the child is returned to the home, they still have to be monitored. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the child is safe and can stay at home, and sometimes the child is removed again. Mm -hmm. So here we go, there's a turbulence that these children go through. Now if the child is in a position where the parents relinquish their rights, then the child is now eligible for adoption. Mm -hmm. And the child is then uh, put with families that may know them, may have an experience with them. Sometimes there's a cultural difference. There's a lot of different things that both the family and the child will experience and have to overcome. And that is one of the reasons why I decided to become a foster parent is because I knew that I had enough love to support a young person who is going through those frightening times, even if my home was simply a transition from one place to another. And so I started in 2004 after the passing of my youngest son because I realized that I had that love to give and I needed to share it. Mm -hmm. I needed young people to know no matter what their ethnicity, their mm -hmm. color, their background, I was open to all children. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a number of years. Now I have had all kinds of experiences. Some young ladies were receptive and I've, I have foster children who are my children. And they've become successful Navy officers, mm -hmm. business owners, 
parents. Some of it are even looking into going into the social service system mm -hmm. and, and doing things to help other foster children that are in the system. Very good. And so the impact that families make on these children changes lives. I cannot tell people enough. The impact, the good that you pour into a child is generational. The rewards are just generational. Mm -hmm. And that child remembers when someone loved them and took care of them. And that is one of the reasons, again, why I try to stay firm uh, with foster care and the adoption ministry. Currently, as I've told you, that I have a, a small segment on the children of God uh, on Fox 5, and we talk about that with different agencies. But I'd like to reach out and tell people that the impact, we try to measure our level of success monetarily. How many cars, how many homes, how many whatever. Mm -hmm. Your real success comes in lives. Mm -hmm. When you change lives. And then you think of actors. You know, look at Simone Biles. Mm -hmm. What would have happened if someone hadn't taken her? Right. You have Ice T. You have so mm -hmm. many actors and performers who have made a difference all because someone stopped long enough to take care of that child. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's in paramount. Uh, so that would be the first part of what I'd like to share with you this afternoon is not only what is foster care, why is it important for parents who genuinely love children and then the impact that they make from it. Okay, okay. What, um, how long does the adoption process take? Okay. The adoption process can take 10 months to a year. Mm -hmm. Now, it also depends on how you enter that process. Mm -hmm. If you obtain a child or you, you foster a child that's in the system and then you choose to adopt, then that child is still with you even to the adoption period. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, the state will pick up a lot of the costs. Mm -hmm. If you decide to just adopt a child, that can take up to a year because of course they have to relinquish, make certain that the parents' rights are relinquished mm -hmm. and all of that and put in place. However, it is, um, it will change that child's life. And when parents do go through the process of adoption, if they don't utilize the state's funds or what have you, then they have to come up with a hefty amount. Mm -hmm. And that could be $20,000. Mm -hmm. okay. So it is highly encouraged to go through the foster care system because that also gives that child an opportunity to see whether or not they bond with you and you bond with them. What would be the first step if I, you know, decided that I wanted to adopt a child? What would I do first? How, what, what would Connect with an, a good organization. Connect with a good organization. And um, there's organizations that are in Northern Virginia mm -hmm where they have attorneys right there okay. and the attorney can walk you through the entire process okay. Okay. yes okay that's okay. good that's good news that's good news now can you adopt more than one child at one time yes you can okay yes you can most certainly work? well same process for each child the courts will determine exactly what that child needs you would have an attorney that child has an attorney mm -hmm. and therefore the court will decide and say based upon what you have to offer that child. Mm -hmm. And of course, let's take a step back. Before you can even think about adopting a child, mm -hmm. what provisions do you have in your home? Mm -hmm. Each child has to have their a room, a bed, closet, a desk, mm -hmm. those type of things. Mm -hmm. And when the attorney or a foster care representative comes into your home, they do a home inspection. Okay. Is the home mm -hmm. safe? Do we have individuals in the home that may present a danger okay. or questionable mm -hmm. behavior? Mm -hmm. So there is a process. And then, of course, you would go through a number of CPS forms. Mm -hmm. You would fill those background forms out. You'd mm -hmm. be fingerprinted mm -hmm. and that type of thing so that they know that who they're dealing with is safe for that child. Because okay. at the end of the day, it's what's best for the child. Okay. Yeah, and I think... I ask that question because I know sometimes we hear bad stories or horror stories about children who are in the foster care system and are, and are adopted. And I just wanted to know what kind of uh, provisions are in place to uh, protect the child as they go through that process. So I was asking that. Um, 
Okay, so um, but let me interject okay. there because you brought up a good a good question there. The state of Virginia, I know, mm -hmm. has a lot of provisions for children who are in care. Mm -hmm. So even if even if you're a foster parent, you have the opportunity to take that child to weekend programs mm -hmm. and events. Mm -hmm counseling sessions, mm -hmm. all type of activities, so that that child has their independence and they're able to bond with other children mm -hmm. who are in foster care. Mm -hmm. And it also gives the foster parent an opportunity to allow that child to grow. Mm -hmm. Normally that happens with children who are 12 and older, but I've seen the experience that these kids come out after a weekend and they've bonded and they met new friends mm -hmm. and they're uplifted because mm -hmm. they know they're not alone. Okay. Okay, um, our, I know that uh, you talked about the lawyer and maybe a lawyer would be better to be able to address the issue of laws that affect the, the adoption process. I was reading a couple of things online uh, about um, some laws that are uh, on the books currently that are being reviewed. Uh, can you address any of those? Are you familiar with any of them? Yes, because we have so many children, especially in the state of Virginia, um, D.C. and Maryland, in this area alone is a hefty amount of uh, individuals. And each year we have at least 20,000 teens, young adults, that age out of the system. Mm. And there's where we find that children are, then they become subject to criminal elements mm -hmm. or human trafficking and things of that nature. Mm. Therefore, I know that there are some communities, like the Gum Springs community mm -hmm. and other communities, that are trying to put some things in place, policies in place, mm -hmm. to kind of protect those children. Okay. And it is also being lobbied down on the hill mm -hmm. on, on moving those things forward so that we have adequate funding to mm -hmm. support children and provide them with the guidance and things that they need. Okay, good, good deal. Um, so, uh, so if you wanted to adopt or foster care, it's best to go to the county to go through mm. yeah okay <laughs> okay well let me tell you like this there are you have the county fairfax county uh, prince william county and all of those have social service programs mm -hmm. for foster care mm -hmm. you also have independent agencies mm -hmm. these independent agencies have a, they separate themselves from the county by stating they are therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Key word is therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Now, therapeutic means that that child needs special assistance. Mm -hmm. Therapeutic means that the stipend that the family receives is a little bit higher than what the county will give you. Mm -hmm. Therapeutic means that there are additional services whether it's psychological services or occupational or whatever type of services that child needs. Mm -hmm. So that that particular agency goes in with just a, a board of things. Okay, does this child need this, this, and this? And now we're going to provide all of these different services because we're a therapeutic agency mm -hmm. and you're a therapeutic parent. Mm -hmm. um, now, how do we know whether or not a child is really therapeutic? Yeah, that's my next question. <laughs> that's the next question. How do we know? We know simply because the child has been removed from their home and it has caused a traumatic effect on them. Okay. That's the that's yeah. the border. Well, and, and I would imagine I w I would think that, um, and I was thinking about the different ways that you could get into the system. Uh, most people think you know they take the children all the time because the parents are bad or whatever. That's not necessarily so. I know that there sometimes parents cannot uh, take care of the children. So can you just? I know you touched on a little bit in your, your mm -hmm. early discussion. Can you just talk about the different ways that you get into the system? Okay. And get when, out. <laughs> and get out. When there's a situation that comes up and CPS is notified, and how are they being notified? They can be notified uh, by a neighbor calling, or a school calling. Mm -hmm. Someone has to contact them and say, hey, there's a concern here, okay. and I think this child is in danger. Okay. CPS will then come out and investigate the situation. They will look at the home and talk to the parents and find out exactly mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then there's a period of time that that case is open, uh, and it gives CPS an opportunity to really kind of delve into what's going on with that child and whether or not it's a situation where they need to be removed from mm -hmm. their current resident. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, once that happens, then and CPS says they uh, file the court, uh, the paperwork and everything with the courts. Then someone from CPS or Child Protective Services, uh, the social worker, someone comes in and removes the child. Now, why would they remove the child? Mm -hmm. If the parent is displaying some type of mental problems mm -hmm. or they're stressed out and there's some type of abuse mm -hmm. that is being displayed, if the parent is incarcerated, mm -hmm. if the parent has uh, uh, an addiction, mm -hmm. whether it's drug or alcohol, uh, perhaps the parent is deceased and the mm -hmm. child has been shifted around mm -hmm. from place to place. These are just some of the main things that uh, children go through and why CPS steps in and removes that child. Okay. Um, I, I was, when I, we were beginning to think about structuring this program and I thought to myself, I thought, well, I, I don't really know anybody who was adopted. And then I thought, well, coming from the South, <laughs> most of us who were raised by our grandparents were in effect adopted in yes. a sense. Yes. And, and so I know that and in some cases, is because your parents, you know, couldn't support a lot of children and yeah. got more than 10, they got 11 kids, mm -hmm. and which was in our case. And sometimes, because the parent, grandparents need company, they want to, to keep some children around them, so they just kind of end up keeping the children. And then again, sometimes it's a case where a mother might have been out of wed, not pregnant, yes. <laughs> and couldn't support. Uh, the child and the, the um, let's say the, the child care and so they end up with the grandmothers and so I, I realize that happens a lot and so um, for those who cannot adopt and those who cannot foster care become foster parents um, well how else can they help? Well there's different ways some mentor okay mentor. Mm -hmm. some, some people take young people under their wings and get, of course, get the permission from the guardian or parents to do so. Some people uh, come and support the parent. Mm -hmm. There's a church program that's out now, and I can't, um, and the church program tries to save the family before a child goes into foster care. Mm -hmm. So just right at that point where parents are stressed out, especially with the pandemic and COVID mm -hmm. and all of those yes, things, the people are really that. stressed mm -hmm. out now. Uh, then individuals are coming in on a voluntary basis and mm -hmm. say, hey, listen, let me run to the store for you. Okay. Or I'll sit with your child until you run with this, okay. to the store, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So we meet people where they are, mm -hmm. um, because that is our greatest ministry. You have to stop and meet them where they are. And sometimes just talking over their heads and talking about things that are not relatable to them does absolutely no, no good. good. Right, right. No good. And so that is why um, it is so important for us to just look around. Sometimes it, it's the slightest little thing. You might be out in public and you see a, a mother stressed out, have two or three kids mm -hmm. or something, and you can simply say, can I get that for you? Can I help you with mm -hmm. something? Or if you have a family member or you know of someone who is really going through a hard time, the mm -hmm. parents are kind of up and down and back and forth, mm -hmm. then hey, bring the kids over here. Let me pick up the kids and give you all a breather. Mm -hmm. You just never know. Just the slightest little reprieve will help a family. Amen. Very good, very good. The other part that deals with, I asked something about the laws. I know that um, we can advocate. That's yes. the process, again, where everybody can participate. As I said, some might, I, my question will be, because as I said, this is a new area. Unfortunately, it's not talked about enough. Right. And so uh, our children are crying and they're, they're, they're needing help and we are not hearing their voice, and we have to, at this point in time, begin to hear the voice of a child who's calling for help. And so if we can't adopt, and if we cannot, um, uh, if we cannot foster, then we can advocate. We can find out what the laws are uh, out there, and, and maybe uh, are there opportunities for want people to go to court with this, the young there people? There you go. Thank okay. you so much for mm -hmm. that opening, because okay. I'm also a court-appointed special advocate Okay, that's referred go. to as a CASA. Okay. Uh, and a CASA goes to court and stands up on behalf of an individual child that's in the foster care system. Okay. What I do is I contact the young lady that I'm a CASA for, mm -hmm. and I find out what, is, what does she need. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, she's in a home, and 
Um, there are things with, that you're supposed to receive every month, whether it's a clothing allowance or personal allowance, but I need to go deeper. Mm -hmm. I need to find out what is that child's future looking like? Mm -hmm. What did they need to do to get there? Okay. Uh, I've uh, recommended uh, a variety of different services and school training um, to help them gain a skill. Mm -hmm. So these are the things. And then we go to court and the judge will ask us, what does this young lady need? Okay. Yes. Okay. And I said, well, I understand that this young lady may need additional support in reading. Mm -hmm. I understand that this young lady is interested in makeup or hair care. Mm -hmm. And so we might consider sending her to cosmetology school to okay. give her a skill. Mm -hmm. These are the type of things as a CASA. Now, a CASA is a volunteer okay. position. It's, volunteer, okay. it's a volunteer position, mm -hmm. but it is so needed. And I, that was my next question. How does one become a CASA? Okay. They would contact their local um, county, mm -hmm. and each county has a CASA or would have a CASA um, office, and then they would go through the necessary training. Mm -hmm. After the necessary training, then they are awarded at the courthouse. And they receive all of their credentials, and they are set up and with a, a child that's in foster care. Okay, the position is, is uh, as long as you want to be in it, or you yes. have a period of time, or no, it's as long as you want to be in it. The only okay. thing that they recommend is that you stay with a child at least a year. At least a year. Okay. All right. Okay. This is good info. I'm enjoying this information. Um, you mentioned, and I don't know if you want to discuss this here or not, but the One Child, One Church, One, one Child. One Church, One Child. Yeah, what is that program about? Is that something you can talk to us about? Yes. The Virginia One Church, One Child, it was established, uh, I want to say, back in the 90s. Uh, and this was specifically to address teenagers who are in the foster care system, especially mm -hmm. African-American teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, and they are focused on helping families from, especially the, the lower region of Virginia, come in contact with these children. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we've even, churches have signed up with Virginia One Church, One Child, and we go through, um, in November, we go through a number of different activities mm -hmm. to support connecting families, especially in the communities with children who are in foster care. Okay. And if someone wanted to get involved in some of those activities, how would they do that? Well, they can certainly contact myself. Okay. How can we contact you? <laughs> well, you can contact me by going to my email address, which is tfinvestmentgroup1 at gmail.com. Okay. 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 All right. Good, good news. Good news. Okay. So let's see. I think you've, uh, you've answered most of my questions. Um, any other comments that you want to make? I would just say to those who are viewing this audio that every person's life that you touch comes back as a reward. Mm -hmm. When you take care of God's people, God's going to certainly take absolutely, care of you. Absolutely. You will not want for anything. I feel that, and the young ladies that I have fostered, we are so close. We will travel together. And they're grown in, in, mm -hmm. with children. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are a family. You That's know? great. I've been in the delivery rooms. Oh. I've given them away at weddings. Okay. And it has just been such a phenomenal experience. I could not have thought, and I have children, biologically, who had not treated me as well mm -hmm. as my foster mm -hmm. children had treated me. And therefore, those that I've had in foster care they are my daughters, and I simply only make the distinction so that you would know who I'm talking about. Okay. Um, but it's been a beautiful experience, and I look forward to just uh, continuing. We've got, like I said, we take vacations together. So it's a very rewarding program, and I would encourage anyone to consider being a foster parent. Mm -hmm. We are going to, on the third week, we will be interviewing a young lady who is who was part of the foster system who went, was adopted and went back in the foster system again. But the one thing she said to me is that you don't have a sense of family. You have no family. Nobody to visit at Christmas time. Nobody to go visit at Thanksgiving. 
nobody to come to visit you. And she said, that's the hardest part of the foster system. So it's important that, and that is where the cry comes from of mm-hmm. a child is to say, I don't belong any place. I don't belong to anybody. And even on the last week, uh, we, the last week of this preview, we'll talk to um, talk about that the effects of being in foster care and being adopted. And sometimes there's some negative side effects from that because it is that I'm loved. I, nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. And that's where we can come in because we have uh, great capacity to love, especially those who, of us who've never had any real kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I've not gone through a, a system of fostering adoption, but I have many children that are, <laughs> you know, running around someplace. But children need to feel like they are a part of a family that they are loved and that they care for. So I say to you, Facebook audience tonight, I hope that you have heard something. I hope that you've been stirred. I hope that your heart has been touched. Um, I realize that there's a difference in compassion and pity. Pity just makes you feel sorry for people. Compassion makes you move. And I hope that something that you've heard, uh, Karen has given us an abundance of information. If you want to follow up with us, she's given you your email. We will be posting some information on our website. And I hope that you would at least begin to take a look at this system, take a look at this process. And we have a responsibility to the children. And so next week we will continue with um, our very own um, Tawana Gay. She is from Hardeman's Dynasty. And she will be discussing, as we've discussed tonight, like the beginning process of foster care and adoption. Uh, Tawana takes up that process that's called aging out of the system. And she'll be on to talk about her nonprofit and what they're doing and where they need help and why they, you know, why they're doing what they're doing. So please turn in. Uh, that's the second week. And then the third week, as I said, we'll be interviewing some people who've gone through the system to just have them to come on. They wanted to come on and share their hearts about their journey. And I think it'll be a good idea. So please stay tuned um, every Monday night. And we pray that we will not have the challenges that we did today. But we still were victorious because we are on. And so we just say, I know we had a couple of phone calls and, and those kinds of things. But hey, it's all to the glory of God. So we say good evening. Uh, and uh, we look to see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.